Well, hi there, everybody. Good morning. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the keynote, Building Your Bottom Line. Today's uh, keynote is sponsored by me and our company, Absolute Caulking and Waterproofing. Uh, I'm Nick Williams, Director of Operations for Absolute Caulking and Waterproofing, and we are pleased to sponsor today's keynote presentation. Budgeting, budgeting, budgeting. A budget gives you an action plan and a clear picture of where your money is ending up each month and the goals you're working toward. Bob Tinglestad, Principal with Plant Moran in partnership with Chris Porter, Manager with Construction Profix Software, Profix Software, present the type of budgets and how to incorporate forecasting with company history. Benchmarking and consensus gathering, how do you accomplish this? What is corporate performance management and how does that work? At the conclusion of this session, uh, I'll have more notes. So uh, I'd love for you guys to go ahead and take it away. I know that we just finished our budget at Absolute uh, approximately two weeks ago and boy, did it feel good to finalize that. So look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Chris and Bob, take it away. I think you guys are both unmuted. Yeah, I, I was about to take it away. At least I had a <clears throat> an echo here. So I don't know if that was just on my end, but uh, thank you for that introduction, Nick. And I think it just might be on your end, Bob, that you're getting the echo. I'm not hearing anything. Okay. I also don't have an echo. Bob, do you have two devices connected perhaps? No, but Okay, I'll get started. Sorry about that. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, so Bob Tingle said here, um, good to be back again today. I don't know how many of you were able to join yesterday, but uh, I am part of Plan Moran's construction industry group with uh, six, we have six. So Bob Tingle said here, uh, I'm trying to work through the audio issues. Is that clear now, Chris? Yeah, yeah, you're good, yeah. Hey, you were clear before. Yep, you're good. Apologize. So we have uh, at Plan Moran spe specialized expertise with developers, investors, brokers, property companies, investment companies, investment funds, general contractors, heavy highway contractors, home builders, specialty trade contractors, uh, et cetera. Today, we're going to go through uh, budgeting and planning, what you can do with forecasting tools to improve your organization decision making. So yesterday, we went through a number of these slides. I want to cover them, highlighting what we can do with budgeting and planning. The first thing is Working capital is crucial to every company, but as you all know, it is particularly important for construction companies. Working capital is an operational issue, but often is perceived to sit within the office of finance. We encourage you to gamify uh, cash collections and, and manage cash gap. Bob, uh, if there's if you need a solution, do you potentially have a set of earbuds that have a mic on them? You could plug those directly into your computer. Yeah, you know what I think I'm going to do um, while I work on that. You think we can switch over? Sorry, I couldn't hear anything you said there. I think he's asking for you to take to yeah. move on to your presentation, and while he works through his issue. Is that what you're asking for, Bob? Okay. Cool. Um, give me two seconds then, and I will 
I'll boot up my slides on my side then, Bob, because I know uh, you had my slides. So give me two seconds here. Well, thankfully, we're all in the construction industry. We have no shortage of ability to react to things on the fly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, do I, if I, can I take over uh, presenter then from you there, Bob? Bob, can you hear me? Chris, your slides, I believe, are up on the screen. <clears throat> it looks like a... Uh... Yeah, I know, but I then have to show something afterwards as well. So oh, that's gotcha. what I, yeah. Here we go. We're motoring. We're good. All right. So um, as, as Bob was, was talking about a little bit earlier, um, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about today is what is corporate performance management. And um, we're also in kind of talking in the vein of budgeting as well. Um, as Nick was talking about, you know, once you he just completed his budget, as many organizations, you know, may have just done or may have done in Q4, um, it's imperative that no matter what that budget is, whether it's a, you know, a corporate budget, whether it's the estimates that you create on a job, um, we need to be actively comparing and actually understanding, you know, those things more readily. Monthly reporting is no longer an effective way of, you know, looking at your business and, and really truly kind of understanding what's going on. Um, and so what corporate performance management does, and the reason why, you know, uh, Bob brought me in today is because what CPM does is it gives finance professionals and most organizations alike the ability to connect to all these different data sources. You know, construction companies use probably more types of systems to run their business than the average business in manufacturing or, or something like that. You know, you have your ERPs, you have your project management, you have your estimation, you may have CRM, uh, you may have production if you do fabrication. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot, right? Um, and it's really increasingly important for all types of contractors, um, specialty subs and, and specialty contractors, um, to be able to connect all these data sets together. Um, Excel is not the answer. You know, this is ultimately this is ultimately what we do. This is why Profits exist, is we connect to all these great data sources. And ultimately, though, it doesn't have to be this way. Um, using Excel as a method to, to getting data out of a system and then engaging with your colleagues, um, we can't afford that. You can't afford to wait days or weeks for uh, reports to be generated or new port reports to be created. Um, what CPM does that's really unique is it gives organizations the ability to connect to those data sources, right? That's challenge number one. But it, we also give people the ability to now analyze that information freely and independently. Um, in the context of budgeting and forecasting and scenario planning, what CPM does in corporate performance management does that you know, analytics typically doesn't do is allows you to take action upon that data in the form of updating your budget, updating your forecast. Um, I'm sure a couple months will go by, Nick, and you know, you'll say, well, that budget doesn't apply anymore. We need to update it, right? And the last thing you want to do is now go through this long cycle that it, you know, the first iteration of your budget took to update it, right? And so this whole concept now of being able to take action quickly and easily, but most importantly, have the data sets that are needed from all over your organization, from your accounting data to your projects data, your estimating data, your CRM data, everything has an impact on the most important thing to every business, cash, right? Everybody needs cash. Everybody needs to be able to project that cash out, right? And so that is ultimately now where, again, CPM plays an immense role in allowing organizations to actively plan their cash. Because what CPM does that 
you know, uh, that spreadsheets don't do very well is to connect to those data sets and make all the data work harmoniously. No more linkages between spreadsheets, no more formula errors. CPM is built for this. It's built to connect data together and allow you to forecast. And so one thing that Bob asked me to kind of really highlight is the forecasting and budgeting side of corporate performance management. And so as we kind of dive on in here, this is the end goal. This is where organization, organizations need to get to. They need to get to the ability to forecast their cash. Banks, sureties, insurance companies are asking for this information way more than they ever used to, right? Everybody's trying to reduce their risk. And so by being able, being able to produce accurate projections, but doing so in an easy way that you can show that surety, you can show that bank, we use this software to do it. And here's the process we go about doing it. That's going to sound a lot better than we use Excel, right? And so the goal, though, is to produce a cash flow forecast. You need to be able to know the money that's coming in from your jobs, the money that's going out from your jobs, and you need to know your corporate overhead. If you're able to solve that, you could largely solve like 90% of your cash forecasting, right? That's the majority of your business. Now, you obviously might have other things down here below those lines that will have impact on cash. But at the end of the day, you know, this is that those are the main things that you're after on a monthly basis, right? But in order to put all that together, we all know that budgeting and forecasting becomes painful when it comes to the topic of collaboration. Right. And so the topic of collaboration is why budget processes take so long. And so our answer to that is a quite eloquent answer is that we have workflow. Now, you may know workflow in the context of your purchase orders, your invoices, your manager needs to approve your vacation. Well, think about the same thing was it in the context of forecasting and budgeting. Nick would have received a spreadsheet and ultimately, you know, probably filled that out. And then he would have sent it to somebody else or, you know, he would have reviewed the people that report to him and their templates. We don't want to do that anymore. We want everybody just to get notifications saying you have a budget, you have a projection, you have a forecast template that needs to be filled out. And the workflow is going to manage all of that so that when a user has to actually contribute so say a project manager or an operations manager gets a template and he or she now needs to tell you what's coming in from AR, what's going out from AP, and you need to actually see that, they're just going to get a link and they're going to bring them right here. Everything they need to do, whether it's reviewing actuals, reviewing the forecast, whatever it may be, it's all in one pane of glass. And so what we've done is we've connected to those detailed AR and AP tables and bringing in the information that we need for this project manager, Wilson Fisk, to be able to see all of his jobs, all the customers that he's working for, for all the vendors that are being involved in those jobs that you owe money to, being able to give them the ability now to look over to the right and actually begin to forecast. And so now we can actually take action on this. We can input data, but a novel concept, right? But that's really where analytics typically kind of stops. We're taking it to the next step of saying, here's your actuals, tell me what's gonna happen in the future. And as I begin to like enter these numbers, you can see, you know, how much have I not forecasted on our, on our collections? Um, how much have I not forecasted on our payables? And so as we complete this exercise, and this is, a template, a template like you would probably have in Excel, but the workflow is doing all of the hard work. It's doing all of the collaboration. It knows that once this is completed, that it needs to go to someone else for approval. And as we complete all of these tasks, the beauty and the, the, the elegance of what's about to happen is managed by the workflow. So now that someone has submitted those payables and receivables, what I'm going to be able to see now is the result of that detailed job level AP and AFR forecast back on my corporate, corporate cash flow. So now let's take it to a next step. Let's look at something else that's probably pretty similar to that. And that would be in the context of our overhead, right? And so as we look at our overhead, you want to be able to forecast you know, your, or your department budgets, you want to be able to forecast your salaries, right? So again, you would have a template in here that would allow you to, you know, come in and begin to 
forecast out that information either by month or you could do it at an annual level where you know you just want to say hey I want to spread this number evenly or I want to spread it based on last year's actuals lots of different cool features and functions that you can do but most of us don't just create one budget right we don't just create one forecast our estimates on our jobs change well, that's where the concept of scenario planning comes into play, where I can start to work and massage the data. I switch over to a new version, I update the forecast, I make another version, so on and so forth. And so again, as I submit this information, again, it's, a, it's its own template, it's its own data set, that information coming from our accounting database, it's going to populate everything now back up at a corporate level. Now, many of you are many of you guys are self-performing. Many of you guys are are subcontractors. What about our labor forecast, right? So again, the theme here is, as an organization, you have all these data sets, and you can forecast these data sets. You can forecast labor. You can forecast equipment just as well as you forecast your income statement and your cash flow. And so again, the, the elegance of CPM is bringing all of these pieces of data together into a cohesive environment and therefore allowing you to be able to make sense of all this information back on ultimately what you would give to the bank, what you would give to your owners, back on your corporate forecasts. And so as organizations look at this information now and they say, boy, that's not looking so hot, right? Our ending cash balance if we only bring in that much money is going to be X, right? So this is where now on, you know, you can start to play with it a little bit, right? You can say, well, what if we make a cut, right? This is where that scenario comes into play. What if I cut overhead expenses by 20%, right? I simply just use that little feature there. I refresh my template and now I come down here to the bottom and okay, it's looking a little bit better, right? And so now as I keep kind of moving along and moving along, I'll start to actually kind of understand, okay, well, maybe I need to dip into my line of credit. So I say that I'm gonna need line of credit come July. What's the interest that we're gonna pay on that? Okay, fantastic, that's helpful. Um, and so this is really, again, where a lot of this comes into play is being able to update these values quickly and easily and not go through the, some long arduous process, right? Um, the other topic that Bob just wanted me to briefly touch on is, you know, we all look at this information, but one of the really key concepts is also this concept of benchmarking too. And so as I look at this as well, just as I compare my budget versus actual, corporate performance management software can also help you compare against benchmarks. We at Profix has a, have a really unique and great partnership with CFMA, whereby we have all of their benchmarker information and we have your actuals, obviously, and we're calculating those KPIs to allow you to do quick and easy comparisons on the fly. And so whether it's in a report format or whether it's in a more elegant, pretty dashboard format, it gives you the ability in one piece of software to actually understand how you're stacking up, right? And so as I come in here, it's really great. I can say, all right, I'm an electrical contractor, great. I wanna see my actuals stacked up against electrical contractors from the 2020 benchmarking report. Fantastic. Or perhaps, you know, you're in drywall. Fantastic. I wanna say, you know, how do I stack up against other drywall contractors in the country? Um, this is all about, again, bringing this information together and making it consumable in an easy to understand way. Um, and so hopefully that kind of gives you a pretty good overview, a pretty good understanding um, of what CPM does, uh, at least on the budgeting side. Um, we do a lot of other things in the world of analytics and reporting as well, with reporting, financial reporting, and so on and so forth. Um, but hopefully Bob is doing a little bit better on his side and the audio. So why don't we check in back with Bob and see how he is doing. I'm back. Can you hear me okay, Chris? You're back. Yes, you are you're you're looking and sounding good. Okay. Sorry about that. So I will go back to what I was going to share in the beginning before um before I handed it over to to Chris. These were some of the slides that we had covered yesterday. 
and I just wanted to go through them again. We talked about them yesterday in terms of um, understanding what is happening in your business, collecting this data, performing data quality on it, um, integrating it so that you can um, you can see all of your information in one place. So this was the cash gap that we went through yesterday. We talked about gamifying uh, this cash gap and 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 not just saying this you know cash flow belongs in the office of finance, but making sure that everybody across your organization understands their role and how they can impact your cash cash management. So there can be lower level scorecard scorecards for say your your project managers to you know do forecasting of of um, of billings in the in the future months. Those are some things that you can do in a performance management tool like Profix. You can do expense planning, um, so you can forecast out in the in the coming months some of your your accounts payable. Um, you can tie everything uh, together uh, with WIP, which of course is is really key. So a lot of times when when we see cash flow forecast it's just based on the on the core financials it doesn't go into to the job module and that is of course a very important uh, a contributing factor for construction companies so job whip we talked about how at least in our view this is one of the most value-added applications uh, of analytics um, in construction much or all of this information exists in in your systems today but pulling the information in from the different modules in some cases different systems maybe from an estimating system maybe from your erp and again multiple modules in that erp maybe from your project management system is easier said than done and we often do that in excel as, as chris outlined we talked about do you have original estimates and, and change order estimates consistently applied which is often more of a process issue than a than a technology question uh, for both the contract value and the cost side so with a performance management tool such as profix you can do the job in project planning um, you can do your whip reporting you can allow multiple contributors as as chris mentioned so you can have your your finance department uh, do overrides at, at the end of the month. You can leverage this to do your monthly or bi-monthly job reviews, including the freeform text that, that often goes into those where you we often see construction clients wanting to document the different risks, some of the subcontractor issues, potential uh, potentially scheduling issues safety quality etc so you can take your relational data from from all your different systems bring it together do the budgeting planning and forecasting as well as do the free form text or the commentary that goes into really everything that we normally see around job management so that's what a performance management solution can can bring to bear you can do all of that you know, really driving that through the performance management solution. Another example we went through yesterday was uh, backlog and scheduling. This often comes from, again, multiple systems. You might have uh, a CRM system. You, you might have uh, a, uh, multiple places where you, you do your planned jobs you might be uh, estimating and, and bidding on. Once you win those jobs, we went through how you'll pull that usually into your financial system and it often doesn't have the same level of detail or, or granularity that you had in, in your estimating system. You can bring all that together in a, in a data warehouse and into a CPM solution so that you can do planning around it. So as you know your backlog for the for the coming year, you can tie that into potentially uh, an FTE or personnel planning module where you can budget based on hours um, or, or FTEs uh, by skill or position type. You can see the, the historicals about for the people you have, what has been their average tenure for people who have been leaving, what's, you know, what, what are the termination reasons? Do you have 
some trends there as you're doing your personnel planning, uh, trying to tie that in across business development, all the way through, you know, managing your jobs efficiently and, and profitably. We also discussed yesterday equipment cost modeling and overall fleet management. We said, are you performing a full life cycle of equipment costing to inform your internal costing uh, or rental rates should you um, run a construction company where you actually have uh, equipment? Do you have good data on, on your ownership and operating costs? And are you using realistic utilization numbers based on both prior years um, of utilization and your current year project backlog. Hopefully all of these examples are, are highlighting, there are a lot of different subject areas that really to make these decisions, you need to bring that information together, really understand it, trust it, and, and uh, perform that planning and, and budgeting to make uh, optimized decisions for your business. So here you could do capital expense planning. So not just the, you know, the operational expense, but your capital expense planning. You can use this uh, performance management tool to do equipment rental rate setting. You can pull in external data. Can you pull in fair market value for, for the different e equipment types that, um, that you do have? And can you perform a, a sweet spot report for when you should buy or, or sell that equipment? So we talked about finance teams feel the pressure more than anyone to make the right decisions for the future of the business and a performance management tool can, can help with all that. So sorry again about the beginning. That's when I had planned to hand it over to, to Chris. Uh, Chris, I don't know if you have anything you wanted to, to add in based on, on that intro that I wasn't able to do. If not, I could skip over to some of the, the benchmarking and consensus gathering, um, wrap up slides that we were we were planning to do yeah i was just going to maybe add you know as 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 bob's kind of uh finishing off some of the slideware here um do feel free to to jump in with some questions use the q a and uh you know let us know if you have any questions about anything we've talked about or anything i showed earlier um you know we're gonna have a q a portion here kind of at the end um so yeah that's 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 the only thing i would add to it yeah perfect thank you so yeah, we know there's a little bit of a lag, so feel free to, to launch in your questions. So as Chris outlined, Profix has built in that, uh, that ability to pull in CFMA benchmarks. Um, while there's a lot of great information in there, there's there's a lot of other benchmarks you might be interested in, and there are other sources um, you know, for, for timely benchmarking. Uh, the, the key is consider benchmarking. Um, we talked yesterday about end user adoption. So whenever you deploy reports and, and analytics, uh, which can include a number of technologies, including performance management, one of the keys is really to focus on end user adoption. So yesterday we covered, you need to solve a business need. It needs to be understandable, the solution to the people that you're rolling it out to and you're expecting to make decisions on a, on a regular basis. The solution needs to be performant, where Google has framed everybody's expectations on, I can search anything in the world and, you know, sub-second response time. Your, your um, business analytics platform needs to also be performant. It certainly needs to be accurate and reliable, and you need to have an executive sponsor sponsorship. Um, a method to determine um, where you have levers to pull to improve your operational performance is through that benchmarking. So one of the things that we have seen as, as we work through um, business analytics deployments and, and trying to get people to make decisions based on data is, for instance, with cash gap, talk about, well, we'd like to reduce our, our AR days. And often we the, that group gets uh, pushback that, Hey, we're doing all that we can to to get our bills out on time and and to ask for you know quicker payment terms. If you're able to benchmark and say, well, other people in our industry are doing better, 
or if you're able to look at your own historical patterns with your own data and say, well, this year, you know, th this was our AR days, maybe it was 40 days or whatever it is. Years ago, we were averaging more around 32 or, you know, whatever the number is. It shows that that new, that KPI can be hit and it allows for more buy-in um, across the organization that this, this is a realistic target that is attainable. And so we're going to put our heads together and figure out how to get there. So I do see a, a question that came through um, from, from Candy. Do, can you export the budget reports to Excel so we could import information into our accounting software? So it was directed at you, Chris. I don't know if you want to answer it directly or, or if you'd like me to. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, we you can certainly do do the import uh, method and and bring that information in. Uh, Profix is well, it's a web based application. Um, is a Microsoft SQL backend. So uh, one of the luxuries we have is we have integrations to over three hundred different data sources, including Excel uh, as well. Um, bringing information there is is key. So uh, yeah, definitely. Yep. So while a lot of um, a lot of applications, uh, ERP systems, and others do allow you to enter a budget, doing monthly budgeting with with maybe rolling forecasts and comparing it to actuals is is usually you know much more challenging. So doing that in a performance management tool, and then even if you are like you're saying, uh, loading that information back into the into the ERP. Um, mm -hmm it's all possible and and it's there's still a lot of upside to doing it uh, in a performance management solution yeah we we commonly have clients that will like export their cost to complete forecasting because that's a that's a form of forecasting we do um they'll, they'll do that in profix rather than doing it in excel and then from it within profix we can export out to excel csv um and then you can put that back into your accounting system uh, if you need it there as well great Okay. Another thing we discussed yesterday is that um, data governance is a big jigsaw puzzle where all the pieces around it are equally important and need to be in place to some degree at least to ensure your data is cleaned and ready for appropriate reporting. So again, to highlight benchmarking and consensus gathering is a key part of some of these puzzle pieces we looked at yesterday. If you look at the top, the the metrics or the KPIs, the communication plan, the executive and stakeholder and stakeholder buy-in. Um, that benchmarking is, is a key piece of it. Um, also, build these KPIs and reports and dashboards. We would encourage you to build them into your management meetings. So if you just simply build the solution and, and ask people to start looking at that data to drive their own behavior, but when you meet as a group, you're not looking at that same information to check the perception of the group against the data. There's a lower chance of adoption and buy-in. We often see if, if it is used in those group, those management meetings, and you use that to frame the conversation and double check your perception against that data, sometimes there are data quality issues. Uh, sometimes there are issues that weren't clear to somebody, um, you know, without looking at that data. But working through those and getting to the point where everybody is comfortable with using it and seeing how it will provide insight to them, where they can take specific actions to improve their own job performance, that is a key part of this um, adoption and consensus gathering uh, process. That's where this executive and stakeholder buy-in is is extremely key. All the all the leads um, in management, uh, we would encourage them to to make sure that that is part of their their management meetings. Okay. We've also we also talked about data governance yesterday. Um, 
a few of the, the, the drivers are efficiency. Um, you need to have, you need, you need to have process and policy to, to get this into practice. There needs to be a data driven culture. Um, so working with your, your people to drive that behavior, there needs to be knowledge on how to use the, the tools and, and what that information is highlighting. Sharing anecdotes is, is something we talked about yesterday. If, if somebody used a, a particular report or dashboard and identified something that, that really did have a positive impact on, on their job performance or, or whatever the, the topic is, share those stories to uh, build that consensus gathering around. This is a, a useful tool that is going to help me do my job better. So in this knowledge category here, um, for adoption of KPIs to work, companies need to encourage all employees to understand and participate in the process that these performance tools uh, can encompass. To improve the speed and, and smoothness of these implementations, it helps to provide upfront training for influential key staff. So it's again, part of that buy-in process, making sure the, the management and the other influential key staff uh, understand how to use it and, and what they're gonna do before rolling it out to, to the rest of the team will have a big impact uh, on the, the overall acceptance. If something gets rolled out too early without appropriate training or guidance or buy-in from, from management, there often is a lower adoption rate. And that's when, unfortunately, your IT investment doesn't go quite as far as, as you would like. I don't know if any of you have had projects like that in the past, but unfortunately, that does happen. This is, we talked about this yesterday. It is not just the technology process. It is partially technology, but it's more about people, culture, training communication it's all about people a little a lot more than than technology um, another thing you can do to increase adoption and, and buy-in is is incentivizing participation you think that uh, participation incentives would be primarily based financially um, on financially rewarding employees but there are other ways to do it uh, a process of of mentorship is one of the best motiv motivators available. Key players uh, can train up other employees uh, and to become trainers themselves. This builds confidence in the team, self-esteem, buy-in to the process. All these things are, are very important. Uh, another thing is if you do set targets for your KPIs and you make some progress towards you know, improving that metric, and you hit the target, have a have a celebration. You know, make it part of your culture and and what everybody is is talking about around the the water cooler. I think most of you are back in the office, so I can say that again. <laughs> but if not, around the water cooler when we get back into the office. Around this practice pillar, um, measure progress. Um, Another opportunity for gaining buy-in from key employees is to assign key staff responsible for tracking and sharing measurement. It doesn't only have to be the, the leadership. Once the vision is set from leadership, you can have other people take uh, leadership roles in tracking these KPIs and communicating the progress. And again, those anecdotes of, hey, here's, here's some people who are ahead in the game and, and having a lot of uh, success in, in improving, you know, this KPI for their job role and celebrate that. Uh, around culture, uh, evaluating and, and adapting. Be prepared for ongoing team effort, uh, an ongoing team effort to improve those K the KPIs. You might initially start tracking, you know, five or 10, and as those settle in and you get really good at those five or 10 KPIs, it might be time to switch them up and track something else. We find that this gamifying of, of you know, tracking KPIs and trying to hit, hit those KPIs is important, but 
it needs to be changed up. You get good at those. You keep a short list um, and and uh, and modify them over time to keep the the level of interest uh, across the organization. Good. So, any other um, questions or Chris, did you have anything based on on those slides from from your own experience that you wanted to? To chime in on yeah I, th I think like you, you make a really like valid point that um, you know there there's there's finding the right technology but you have to really ensure that there's buy-in and adoption right you know every organization is slightly kind of different in terms of like is it more of the herd that we're going to get to buy it in or are we going to take the top-down approach of like the executives are going to tell you guys this is you know an application or this is a process this is a technology we need to use right um, it, it's it's oftentimes not always a part of the conversation right uh, whether it's a data governance strategy or it's a new piece of technology that you're adopting um, it, you know the the thought and the conversation needs to happen of like you know are, are people going to use this are people going to adopt this right um, a lot of things have a good premise and have a good you know potential but usage is everything usage and adoption are everything right so i would just always encourage customers and, and organizations to really think about that piece of um the strategy of of you know how is this going to be put into our culture is our culture ready for this type of a thing right um yeah. so that i think that's always just something we want to consider um but we don't always take the time to consider very good well, with that, I'll encourage anybody who has questions on on what Chris demoed or or any of uh, anything that we covered today. If, if you do have questions, we're happy to to answer them. I will say as we await potential questions. Um, we will be sending out a, a PowerPoint um, PDF with, um, with with this deck, and these have links to uh, to some articles you can you can read about if if you're interested in in some of these topics. And yeah. as well with all of the sessions, they are all recorded and will be sent out to each attendee. Um, I will say to everyone who did attend today, thank you for attending today's keynote presentation. Uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at tomorrow's keynote. It's the dealing with valuation. Uh, what is your company's value beyond the balance sheet? So that's gonna take place tomorrow at 11 a.m., a little bit of a different time for the keynote. Just wanna make sure that that's of note. 11 a.m. is when the keynote takes place as opposed to today's at 10 a.m. So mark your calendars for that. And Bob, it does appear that there are no further questions. So I will uh, go ahead and let everybody take a nice early lunch break. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Chris, for uh, for co-presenting. Again, I apologize for my audio issues in the beginning. It threw things off a little bit. But thank you for everybody, um, everybody's patience and have a great day. <laughs>